Hi and welcome back to another episode of Better Talks. As you would know, Better Talks is a series of videos with industry experts and leaders in the field of procurement and supply chain where we discuss key industry trends and market issues today. I'm Bharat from the packaging cluster at Bero. In this episode of Bero Talk, we will be discussing the most about the most spectacular sporting event of the world, the Olympics. With only two months to kick off, we felt that this could be the right time to understand how such sporting events could have an impact on packaging and how packaging could be used as a medium to strengthen a company's brand positioning and sales. Whenever there's a big sporting event coming up, major companies would look to capitalize on the same. They try to increase the brand quotient and also try to gel themselves closely with the customers and support their country. And when we talk about these two, from a packaging standpoint, two things come to my mind. And this could be from the manufacturer standpoint and as well as the customer standpoint. And those are innovation and sustainability. In fact, the 2012 London Olympics was hailed to be the most sustainable and most innovative and environmentally friendly Olympics till date. This is mainly because of the green initiators influencing the venues, materials, packaging, and even the flowers that were used during the ceremony. Um, so, how does this affect packaging sector as a whole? You know, basically, companies are focusing on innovations that are sustainable too. And any product that satisfies both the criteria are loved by the end users. Not all the time, the innovations in packaging are widely spoken in the media. But it's a fact that the companies incur a lot of time and also has a huge spend on implementing these packaging changes to the products. To discuss more on this, we have our expert, Randy, who's also known as Dr. Box in the industry. Randy is one of the very few consultants in the packaging industry, who is also a member of Tappy Packaging Council. Thank you very much, Randy, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us once again. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So Randy, tell us, how excited are you about this year's Olympics? Very excited. The Olympics are always uh, a great thing to watch and see all of the top athletes and all of the different countries compete against each other. And um, it's, it's just basically an entire festivity of excellence where everybody has worked so hard to be the best that they can in their sports. And it's the only place that we're all one world and we all compete together. Well said, Randy. So is there any particular sporting event that you're looking forward to? I like lots of them, so not one in particular. I like a lot of a lot of different sporting events in the Olympics. Good to hear that. Um, so because we both are from the packaging division, so I thought it would be good to you know start off uh, by discussing something on the lines of sustainability and innovation in packaging with respect to Rio Olympics. So what are your thoughts on that? In 1994, there was an amendment to the International Olympic Committee's Olympic Charter that added a paragraph regarding the environment and sustainability. That kind of started the sustainability trend as far as the Olympic Games are concerned. In 1999, then there was an Agenda 21 that they added, which uh, had a little more verbiage on that. But it was really the 2010 Vancouver Olympics which uh, they were the first to implement a supply chain focused sustainability program. And the 2012 London Olympics was considered the first zero waste Olympics. So from a packaging sustainability standpoint, there's been a very strong trend in sustainability initiatives and requirements of its suppliers. There has also uh, been a similar trend globally. There have been regulations passed in over 100 cities worldwide banning plastic grocery bags. China has banned excessive packaging. 
San Francisco in the United States has banned expanded polystyrene. Uh, companies all over the world are demanding that paper products come from certified sustainable forests. And on that end, Europe has been leading the charge for lightweighting all of paper packaging. In addition, there's been a push for material reduction, recycled content, recyclability, reusability, and even the use of bioplastics towards this same end in the last several years. That is right. Um, most of the things that you've mentioned, you know, are making news uh, at the moment. Uh, and rightly said about the styrofoam packaging, you know, recently I did read about uh, styrofoam packaging ban in New York, uh, you know, quick service restaurants where, you know, uh, styrofoam packaging, instead of styrofoam packaging, they are using uh, uh, carton boards, uh, which are biodegradable. So I think, you know, people are not only, you know, the large companies, even the small companies are moving in towards sustainability. And as you said, there are a lot of laws that are governing sustainability and, you know, using of uh, packaging that are biodegradable and also environment friendly. Uh, so uh, moving on to the next question, you know, uh, with respect to Olympic Games, you know, what are the what are the large companies doing? So uh, how, how do they make use of such a sporting event? OK, uh, I. There. What I want to start with is explaining in the London Olympics, what is meant by a zero waste Olympics and then how that affected the packaging suppliers during that Olympics. And I think that will give you a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, zero waste Olympics means several things. But first of all, all waste had to be diverted from landfills and all packaging materials were to be engineered to be recyclable, contain recycled content, or if that was impossible to be compostable. And uh, the goal was to have 70% of all waste be recycled, reused, or composted. Now, one of the companies you were um, asking about different companies was Coca-Cola because they uh, have been the longest running supporter of the Olympic Games. And they had a goal of turning every soft drink bottle recycled at the London Games into new bottles and have them back on the shelves within six weeks. And Coca-Cola recycled approximately 15 million bottles and met the goal of six weeks. Approximately 8,500 tons of packaging needed to be diverted from the landfills. London Biopackaging was the official packaging supplier for over 50 different businesses and vendors at the 2012 Olympics. And there were three different categories of packaging. There was recycling, food and compostable packaging, and non-recyclable. And each of those at the event were color-coded with symbols. That way they could be put in the proper bins and they could be properly processed. And there were around 14 million meals that were served. Coca-Cola also met their goal of a minimum of 25% recycled PET content in the bottles that they used at the games. The majority of the packaging supplied by Havi Global Solutions for McDonald's, which was the only branded uh, supplier for the Olympic Games serving food, their products were pretty much already compostable, but they had to gain certifications to prove that they were compostable. So mm -hmm. that was a new process for them. Mm -hmm. London Biopackaging used strategies of taking existing items that were already certified as compostable to use the same materials and things like that to help speed the process and simplify the certification process for all of their packaging because it was quite extensive during those games. Um, some other packaging innovations um, that were used to meet these goals that uh, some packaging layers and additives were not conducive to being recycled including the PET Coca-Cola bottles. Coca-Cola had to change the Powerade label adhesive and the oxygen scavenger layer from their vitamin water in order to try to achieve their 100% recyclability of all the products that they provided to the games. Mm -hmm. Now, these innovations have also been expanded to all of their similar products after the games. Mm -hmm. Another company, Heineken, 
has traditionally been sold in green glass bottles, but for the London Games, they were served in green recyclable PET bottles mm -hmm. that were engineered specifically to meet the requirements of this event. After the event, they have since expanded the use of these PET bottles in many other countries around the world to replace glass bottles. Happy Global Solutions had to re-engineer some of its products to make them compostable as well. They included changing the oriented polypropylene milk sleeve and changing it to an oriented polystyrene instead. And all of the cups and lids had to be made of a compostable plastic. In addition, the variety of packaging was dramatically reduced by Happy Global Solutions and London Biopackaging to try to use the same packaging for many different items as well. That was uh, really informative, uh, Randy. And uh, I'm sure this... I mean, to pull off something like that, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, significant work that has gone behind, you know, in the packaging uh, division of all these companies, especially uh, the Coca-Cola and the Heineken's. Um, so do you think, I mean, uh, are we going to see similar uh, uh, Olympics uh, in 2016 that, uh, you know, uh, there are going to be innovations uh, like the Coca-Cola's and Heineken's as well? I believe that we will. Because at the Rio Olympics, the commitments this year are to reduce the packaging generation, increase the recyclability and compostability, very similar to the London Games. Brazil, in addition, has also adopted uh, new laws regarding sustainability and packaging for the entire country. For those wanting to know the specifics, there's an Annex 3 Rio 2016 Sustainable Supply Chain Guide that details the actual program and all the different details. And, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, bottles, you know, I also recently read about, uh, you know, Coca-Cola's 100% bio-based PET bottles. So I know this is not for the uh, Olympics as such, but do you think that, you know, in the long, in the longer run, these can be, uh, you know, made commercial and can be used across their products? That is their goal to eventually do that, but it's going to take a significant amount of time because, you know, currently the resources are, are not available to be able to meet the demands, mm -hmm. but they continue to uh, push on the research in that area and they're growing the amount of uh, bioplastic that they're using every single year with the goal of eventually moving towards that completely between bioplastic and recyclable PET. Agreed. Yep. Sounds good. And uh, one more thing that I wanted to uh, touch upon on the uh, uh, innovation part was, you know, uh, something that Hershey's came up with. So Hershey's, uh, for the current uh, Rio Olympics, what they have done is they have come up with a, 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 a packaging where they have red, white and blue flags, you know, and also have their, uh, the, U, the, the flags of USA. Uh, you know, to, to promote uh, the USA's uh, uh, sport team and also, you know, celebrate uh, their team with, in the Olympics. So, how, how do you, have you heard about any of these uh, innovations? I am not familiar with that one in particular, no, but I do know that uh, as they're sorting all the details out that there are going to be some innovations, but they, uh, I really haven't... Uh, heard of any that have already been done for the Olympics for Rio yet. I know they're all still in process and trying to meet all of the requirements that have been set for the Olympic Games. And um, it seems like a lot of the companies are being a little bit closed-lipped on what they're working on to try to achieve those goals at this point. And also one, one more uh, uh, sustainable uh, packaging that I was talking about was, you know, Recently, I've been uh, reading a lot of uh, news on uh, uh, edible packaging. So, you no, know, do you think you know edible packaging is something that could be used uh, for the current Rio Olympics, or is it uh, too soon? I think it's too soon. I don't think it's necessarily too soon because of the Olympics or anything else. I think it's too soon because I don't think that the general public is ready to eat their packaging. Now, certainly there is the ability to do that, but I think the hardest thing is going to be um, psychologically and culturally for people to, uh, for it to be acceptable for them to eat their package. I, th I think that's going to be more of an issue than whether or not the packaging is edible 
and not harmful to you. It's historically people have not eaten packaging and people are resistant to change and I think it's I think it's going to be a slow process. Rightly said and even I was thinking on the same lines as how would people react you know to eat the packages uh, but I'm sure you know eventually we would be uh, heading there sometime you know in order to cut uh, wastages. Yeah that certainly would help. And uh, one last point that I wanted to touch upon was you know what 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 can we learn from this you know why should you know buyers manufacturers and distributors focus you know towards sustainability and innovation in packaging well with city states provinces countries and the olympics all adopting new sustainability requirements i think we should follow the olympic blueprint and focus on creating packaging that uses higher recycled content that is recyclable reusable or at a minimum compostable whenever possible because there is a strong trend in that direction in addition we need to continue to look for opportunities to eliminate excess packaging that's not necessary and to lightweight our packaging like has been done uh, in both paper packaging and in PET. It will be good for the environment, good for our children, good for their children, and good for business. So in this scenario, I think everyone wins. So, uh, but thank you again, Barreau, for having me as your guest for this informative webinar, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Randy, uh, for you know giving us such uh, wonderful insights. And uh, I'm sure uh, your insights would be of great help to uh, all the people involved in packaging and uh, uh, they could move towards sustainability and innovation. Uh, thank you once again uh, for joining us today and we'll look forward to working with you once again. Thank you very much, Randy. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.